So I'm from Canada. I live here in Dubai for 11 and a half years. And I've been following Dr. Joe. I saw him the first time in What the Bleep Do You Know, 2004, which I resonated with me. And um, I didn't get into the work till about five years ago. I did start to read his books, but the meditation was five years ago. And then it was the last two years that I've just been really dedicated. I've done other meditations. I have a martial arts background. So I have my Taoist meditation. But once I started to do Dr. Joe's, it just, as the more and more I did it, and I saw the testimonials of everyone who are experiencing such great healing, it really inspired me to really focus on the meditation. And um, I came here to focus on my eyes. I have chronic dry eyes, which affect my vision. My vision gets worse. It's been really bad for the last six years. And I have tinnitus in my left ear that came about a year ago. I don't know where it came from, and it has been getting worse. Explain the symptoms of tinnitus for those people who don't understand what it is. Uh, tinnitus is ringing in the ear. So you know when you go to a concert and you leave, you go home, but you still feel this ringing in your head? And you don't know where it's coming from? That's what it is, it's continuous ringing that I hear. And it can be quite frustrating, not when I'm at work because there's always noise, but once it gets quiet and I'm trying to study, because I'm studying right now as well as I work, it, it's very distracting. And then when I try to go to sleep, it's just this ringing, ringing. And the last six months, it's just been really, really bad. And I also have an issue with my iliofemoral ligament, which is your hip ligament. It's the strongest ligament in the body. And when it's weak, it's not fun. It's been affecting me, affects my workouts. I have to be very careful. I had to start rock climbing for a while because I didn't have the strength. Even getting up from sleeping at night, going to the bathroom, all of a sudden I feel like an old lady. And I'm like, give me a break. I'm only in my, mid, my early 40s, for goodness sakes. This is not age. This is, you know, there's something wrong with my pelvis. I've had treatments. It got better. Then last week, it came again. And I'm like, okay, that's it. This is getting ridiculous. But my intention coming to this event was to heal my eyes. So we did my favorite meditation the other day, which was space time, time space. I felt like a child again, I was so excited. Got into it, sat up. The first bars of the music was right into it. I was gone. I was into the cosmos, didn't feel my body. My body right away went to sleep. And I had such an amazing time in there. I was seeing all these different patterns. I was seeing light everywhere. And as I heard Dr. Joe say, you can come lie down now. I was like, oh wait, I'm not ready to come back. I like it out there. So I came back into my body, but I felt that something was different in my body, but I didn't know what it was. And the first few meditations that we did, I found that I wasn't comfortable lying down on the floor. And I love Shavasana, it's my favorite yoga pose. But I just wasn't feeling it until we did that meditation. I was lying there and all of a sudden I was just so relaxed, and my body was like, what is this? This is different. But I didn't realize what it was until I opened my eyes, and I'm sitting up, and I'm walking, and I'm like, wait, what? I don't hear ringing. And that night, I went to sleep. Just before I fell asleep, I'm like, it's dead quiet. I usually listen to um, some binaural uh, music or something, rain because I need that white noise to filter out that ringing. I didn't need it. It was absolutely quiet. I fell asleep. And then, yesterday, because I wasn't paying attention, as I was working out and after I was walking around, you know, with my friends here, I'm like, wait a minute. What's going on? <laughs> I can do that again with no issue. Um, thank you. And what I realized, while I'm, yes, I want to heal my body, but I was focusing only on my eyes, and yes, I have other issues, but I thought, oh, I'll deal with that later. So I'm not paying attention to them, but as I'm not paying attention to them, they're like, oh, let's see if she noticed that we heal. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Now, Lawrence, where are you? Lawrence, come up here.
Now, this is where things start getting weird. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm a South African, and I've been living in Dubai for 13 years. And yesterday, I came in here struggling with this whole meditation thing. I love it. <laughs> that means he's doing it right. He's and coming up some, against himself. And I've met some amazing people that are helping me on to get over some of the things that I've been struggling with. Yesterday, through a series of synchronous events, I ended up sitting next to Raven. <laughs> and I'd taken inspiration from her story the night before where she shared it with our group uh, in Molka, that she had, the, the tinnitus in her ears had disappeared. I've had tinnitus in my left ear for 11 years. I use the same, bino, uh, the, the same tapes that I listen to to get rid of the ringing in my ears at night. I battle to sleep. I sat next to Raven yesterday. We'd never t spoken, but I had taken inspiration from her story. And I sat next to her, and we, in, the, in the buddy sessions, I was talking to somebody else. I, I never even spoke to her. We just greeted each other, and how are you doing? Now, it was a coincidence <laughs> that he was sitting next to Raven. And there's another lady that sat on my other side, on my left side. Lisa, and she's been to six of Dr. Joe's retreats, and I, I connected with her and we spoke quite a bit yesterday, and she was sitting on my other side and Raven on this side. I was like a hamburger. Spiritual hamburger. <laughs> I was struggling. In, the first meditation yesterday was fantastic. Walking out in that park was the best morning I've had in Dubai in 13 years. There's something else. I've been terrified to get on a stage for the last two years. <laughs> So I'm sitting there, and I'm a wriggler, and I'm struggling, and my back is killing me. Wait a second, wait a second. Let's just, let's just check our audience. How many people have been there? You know, where your just, body's just... So I'm not alone. Yeah, because I want you to listen, because I've learned this uh, in the last few months in watching people come up to the edge where they want to quit, they want to go home, they want to leave, they, they, want, they don't think it works, it's not for them, they're going to go back to crystals and colonics or whatever, you know, they're going to just do their own thing, you know, and, and, and break away, you know. And they have every reason they give up and they just go one more time and they think they're doing it wrong, but that's the edge of the known right there. That's when their brain is disconnecting all its circuitry. It's when genes are in between upregulation and downregulation. The body's in this kind of between world state and you, you can't think, you can't figure it out, your brain's not working, nothing's working because everything that you do that you know how to do isn't working. You know what I mean when I say that? And then all of a sudden, you just kind of finally let go, relax, surrender, and just do it one more time. And you don't even care if it's going to work or not. 
You don't even care. You're just going to do it just for the sake of doing it instead of doing it and then <laughs> do it again. Just do it and don't even care what happens, and you just go all in one more time, and that's a very, very important moment. So go ahead. So I sit down, and I'm wriggling around, and I'm struggling, and I'm thinking, what the hell is this all about? <laughs> and I'm closing my eyes, and I'm trying to get back into it and get to somewhere, get, find something. And I open my eyes, and I look at the stage, and I sense that Lisa next to me is connecting. And I think, I want a bit of that. And I closed my eyes, and I felt the, the energy coming from her. I then, we finished the whole exercise, and I felt fantastic. I then said goodbye to my buddy. I got in the, I, I met another lady outside, and I asked if, if, I could share, if we could share a cab, because I live in, on the other side of Dubai. Got in the car, same person. Halfway up Sheikh Zayed Road, it's about 10 k's away. I suddenly realized that there was no ringing in my ear. Now, I want this to be a teaching tool for you because on my own personal journey, I know that when my body is agitated, when it's restless, when it doesn't want to sit still, when it's doing whatever it does, I've done this long enough to know that this is a very important moment. This is kind of tempering the savage beast, the, 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 the body that's uh, undisciplined. And just like when you're training any animal, oh, a stallion is a great example, just before it finally lets go, it'll always just rebel as hard as it can, one last time to see if it's going to make a difference. And then it realizes it's not going to make a difference, and it just finally, this innate release takes place, and all of a sudden, they're tame, or there's something's, something's changed in them. And, and in this situation with Lawrence, he has been meditating. He's, a, he's been doing the work for a long time, and many people in this work come to these week-long events, and they're surprised that something comes up like this, and that's exactly what needs to come up for them to heal. This happened numerous times. This is, this is the body making one last effort in the war. And the hardest battle of every war is the last battle. That's when it's over. And so the body does whatever it can. Whether he reached the edge of his emotional belief of the known, whether he stepped into a footprint in consciousness, a morphogenic field that was already created in the energy field of Raven, whether it was the synchronicity of him sitting in that place, whether it was his meditation in the morning that he loved so much that he was so connected to, or whether it was the alignment of all those things to a greater order, he experienced the truth by letting go completely. And I want you to know that what creates the miraculous is stepping outside the known and disentangling from those programs. And when you come up against it, I want you to remember this story. I want you to remember the people who just go in one more time, just go a little further, go a little bit more, make, it, make one more effort, because that's when they step out of the known and stop doing it their way. That's surrender. That's complete surrender, trusting in something greater. You let go all the way, and just like those beautiful people that catch you in the surrender activity, the divine is all around you. 
You're the fish in water asking for a drink. When you finally let go, you let go of all the barriers, all the things that keep you separate from it. And it's that fully letting go of what you know that puts you in the unknown. And it's just a matter of preparation. It is a matter of going one step further.